This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Curfew imposed in sections of Trenchtown. A curfew has been imposed in sections of the Trenchtown community in the Kingston Western Division. The curfew began at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, February 15, and will remain in effect until 6 p.m. Thursday, February 17. The boundaries of the curfew are as follows. North along 11th Street from the intersection of Greenridge Street and 11th Street using an imaginary line to the intersection of Pole Vault Pathway and Collie Smith Drive. East along Collie Smith Drive from the intersection of Pole Vault Pathway and Collie Smith Drive to the intersection of Collie Smith Drive and 7th Street. South along 7th Street from the intersection of Collie Smith Drive and 7th Street to the intersection of 7th Street and Greenwich Street. West along Greenwich Street from the intersection of Greenwich Street and 7th Street to the intersection of 11th Street and Greenwich Street. During the hours of the curfew, all individuals within the boundaries of the curfew are required to remain within their premises unless otherwise authorized in writing by the ground commander. St. Catherine Police Hunting Killer of Old Harbor Fish Vendor The Old Harbor Police in St. Catherine are searching for a man who fatally shot a fish vendor at the Old Harbor Bay Fish Market Tuesday afternoon. 51-year-old Patsy Coleman of Rasta Corner, Sandy Bay, Clarendon, is the fourth female to be killed in St. Catherine for the month of February 2022. Her killing follows the murders of Shivoni Golding, 52, Murderland Sullivan, 63, and a 44-year-old Nicola Sittal, all of St. Catherine addresses. Coleman, who sells a fish on the streets, went to buy her stock on the beach about 1.15 p.m., when she was shot and killed after using the toilet on the compound. I'll know Mr. Lashik, as it could have been anybody, said one woman. This fish market is always busy and gunmen can just come and kill people. An eyewitness said that after Coleman returned from the bathroom, she was pounced upon by a man armed with a gun. The man shot her repeatedly and ran from the seaside while firing shots at persons who chased him. The boy really fast and him fire enough shot and get away. A vendor said. The Old Harbor Bay area, known for the gun for drugs trade, is one of the largest fishing villages in Jamaica. Police investigators said that no motive have been established for the killing of the vendor. Woman and the grandson left homeless after Manchester fire. A Manchester woman and her grandson have been left homeless after a fire gutted their home in Robins Hall near Malton in the parish Tuesday. This is the third major fire in the community in the past two months. According to reports, the grandmother left a wood fire unattended while cooking. Some time later, residents saw smoke and raised an alarm that the house was on fire. Deputy Superintendent at the Mandeville Fire Brigade, Rohan Powell, told the news that when the firefighters got to the scene, everything was already lost. Omar Miller, the counselor of the Craighead Division, said, the number of recent fires in the area is worrying. There are so many persons who have been displaced. The first a fire in Coleyville, 18 individuals were displaced. Five persons were displaced in a fire in Tikitiki, he said. Miller added that two houses were destroyed in Silent Hill, displacing a total of 11 individuals. In Robbins Hall, Malton, we have had two other fires where 11 became homeless from one home and two individuals from the other, he said. Miller said it is now a challenge to get adequate assistance for the victims. Miller said he will sit with the chairman of the Manchester Municipal Corporation to explore the possibility of additional assistance through the Ministry of Local Government. FLA ex-deputy chair denies a wrongdoing, claims official taking bribes. Former Deputy Chairman of the Firearm Licensing Authority, Dennis Meadows, is alleging that there is major corruption at the agency. According to Meadows, as recently as last week, an acquaintance of his paid $1.35 million to an emissary of an FLA official and obtained a firearm license in a record time of two months. Further, those who are denied their application for a firearm are contacted by said emissary and invited to lodge $6,000 US dollars 
to a Caymanian and U.S. account. One such account belongs to a family member of a senior head at FLA, Meadows claimed. He has renewed calls for the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, the Integrity Commission and the Auditor General's Department, to immediately conduct a probe into allegations of impropriety at the agency. Meanwhile, the former FLA deputy chairman has rejected allegations made by FLA Chief Executive Officer Shane Darling yesterday morning. At the press conference, Darling raised a grave concern about Meadows' conduct as an FLA director. But Meadows has described Darling's utterances as incendiary and defamatory. I am a straight shooter and I speak my mind openly and forthrightly. I do so without fear or favor, he said. The former FLA deputy chairman said he has forwarded recordings of the press conference to his attorneys. Meadows and his former board colleagues were appointed to the FLA board in March 2016. Meanwhile, Meadows said when the FLA issues became a matter of public interest, he recused himself from the board to facilitate an unhindered investigation. He also said he invited Mocha to investigate all allegations. Although I wasn't the target on any investigation particularly, I assisted Mocha's investigation even without the services of legal counsel, he said. Cobb saved her colleagues from angry residents after arrest of alleged gangster. A detective corporal assigned to the counter-terrorism and organized crime branch of the Jamaica Constabulary Force on Tuesday testified that he was the one who sought the help of the Jamaica Defense Force soldiers when police encountered hostile residents during the arrest of an alleged Klansman gangster in a Kingston community. They accused Fabian Johnson, alias Crooks, who was arrested on Beeston Street in Kingston, is among the 33 alleged members of the Klansman gang on trial for various crimes since last September. According to the detective corporal, in June of 2019, he, along with two other investigators and the witness number one, were conducting inquiries in the Kingston area when the witness pointed out the accused to them. The detective corporal said when the police team exited the vehicle to apprehend the suspect, they were met with resistance from members of the community who were yelling at them in an aggressive manner. He told the court that he drove to the intersection of Bond Street and Beeston Street and requested the assistance of the military unit that was posted there to assist the police in getting the suspect away from the area and into custody. The lead investigator in the matter testified in November last year that the attempt to arrest Johnson, who claimed to be a musician, drew a hostile crowd who hurled insults and obscenities at the police team, charging that the officers were aligned to the rival Tesha Miller faction of the gang. A lot of insulting languages were being used at the time. Some of them said we are Tesha Miller police and that are Andre them life and other abusive words, the officer told the court at that time. He said the officers were tempted to move with the crocs but were spared that trauma as a JDF lorry arrived on the scene with a team of soldiers. He said after speaking with the driver, Johnson was placed in that vehicle and taken to the Denham Town Police Station. On Tuesday, the detective corporal was amongst three police witnesses who were recalled by the prosecution to corroborate the testimonies of witness number one and the lead investigator. The lawman told the court that he being a trained forensic photographer was the one to photograph, document, and seal a rifle which the ex-gang member testified that he took from his cronies under the pretext of getting it fixed, but instead turned it over to police investigators. The firearm and the box in which it was sealed on Tuesday was admitted into evidence after being identified by the cop as the items he had photographed and handled. He was, however, taken to task for failing to place an identifying mark on the firearm. The cop in his defense, however, maintained that he had only been instructed to photograph, box, and seal the item. He further said, like the lead investigator, that the firearm carried no serial number. On Tuesday, defense attorneys attempted to poke holes in his testimony by grilling him about the fact that the lead investigator had told the court that when he inspected the firearm, he had seen the letters SVT inscribed on it which was in contrast to him saying the weapon was a bear of marking. 
They further took him to task over his notation on the label of the firearm box, which said that the rifle had been turned over to the custody of investigators by the witness on Port Royal Street in Kingston. The lead investigator had told the court that the rifle was transferred to the cops in Portmore, St. Catherine. In the meantime, the detective corporal also identified for the court Johnson and another of the accused of former JDF member Jermaine Robinson in the docks. The trial continues this morning when the matter resumes at 10. Relatives of suspect in assassination of Haitian president seeking asylum in Jamaica. Family members of a prime suspect in last year's assassination of the president of Haiti are seeking asylum in Jamaica. This was disclosed on Tuesday when former Haitian Senator Jean Joel Joseph and his family appeared in the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on immigration related charges. Donahue Martin, the attorney representing the Josephs, said he made an application to the Passport Immigration and the Citizenship Agency under the Convention relating to the status of refugees and its protocols. Parish Judge Lorian Cole Montague adjourned the matter until March 3. Mr. Joseph and the three members of his family were arrested in St. Elizabeth last month. Haitian President Hovenel Moise was killed and his wife wounded on July 7, 2021, when about 20 burst into the presidential residence and shot them. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.